Hey everybody, welcome back. We're playing uh, Super Mario 64. And it's been a while, but <laughs> we're finally going to do Castle Center as Reinhardt. Um, I had a few glitches during this playthrough, so please be aware of that. Don't be judge me too harshly. Um, for one thing, save crystals quit working about halfway through the um, the level. I don't know why, but I did I did manage to save it this one time. You see there, boom, they disappeared. I don't know what happened. Um, I did use save states every time I got to a save crystal, so technically I didn't use save states. But I don't care what you think, I know I can beat this game without them because I have many times before. So this is Castle Center, and the best thing about this level is it's probably the worst level in the, in the game. Um, it doesn't help either that Reinhardt has to deal with uh, three-headed dogs. Carrie just gets skeletons on motorcycles, the series namesake villain, but Reinhardt has to deal with Cerberus here. It's the exact same um, Cerberus monsters you fought as bosses in uh, the villa level early on. A lot of backtracking in this level, as you'll see pretty soon. That's another reason it's not one of my favorites. In particular, this room here, which contains three vampires, which respawn every time you walk through it when you're not um, carrying either Mandragora or Magical Nitro. Which is a lot. Pick up this gold. walk up the not stairs and then go through the door here. I'm actually going to hopefully, if I remember to, point out something funny to you that always killed me as a kid in that room. There is one of the blood monsters in this room on the statue, but you can just avoid it. I always just go around. These zombies here, you have to be careful, of course, so they will not despawn when you're carrying uh, Magical Nitro. Fortunately, they're slow enough that even Reinhardt can kill them without too much trouble. If you'll notice, I'm jumping around like an idiot because that's what speedrunners in this game always do, so I assume it makes you a little bit faster. Here's another thing I hate about this level. Just like the room with the respawning vampires that you have to kill to get out, in this room you have to kill lizards that come out of these metal closets on the wall. That annoying wee-wee sound that they make really makes me not like this level also. Whee! Die. Lizards are one of the more annoying enemies in the game. Not so much in this level, but when you're playing as Carrie in the um, the underground waterway, they have a habit of knocking you off. Interestingly enough, after you've collected that thing once, it becomes a solid object. You can't uh, you can't collect that again. I have another video about the things that were cut from this game in development that were some of which were added back in in Castlevania Legacy of Darkness and uh, I think this level had a lot of things that were meant to be in it that got cut out I'm gonna pause here for a second I was having some controller issues so just ignore that there we go for one thing you'll notice later on there's some doors that if you read the description on them it says they're boarded up which um, considering all the blowing up of walls in this level it was quite possible you had to blow those doors open at one point in the game's development. Also, I had a comment from a random YouTube user on my other video that um, the Lizard Man, which you're about to see in the room up ahead, was originally Cornell, and that um, you recruited him at this point in the game on your quest in the original version. Which we do know Cornell originally was a prisoner because of this alternate outfit, which has him with a a prison leg iron on. There's a ton of little neat things you could check and read a description of in this level too, which is kind of neat. 
We do have to talk to the lizard man, but I'm just going to ignore him for now. I watched you die. I'd just like to point out that Reinhardt's stomach terrifies me. Look at that thing. It's got more ripples than a pond. Punctuation? Whatever wretches are. And sadly, I don't think Reinhardt has picked up on it yet, and if you haven't either, you probably should be studying rather than watching this video. I have a feeling that the torture device over there that I didn't check uh, had something to do with the, the original premise of this level back before it got cut in half. Now this is another reason why I hate this level. It's all backtracking. Pretty much your main goal is to remove the seal in the, the giant arena area and then blow it up with magical nitro. But to do this, you have to run all around the castle 36 times from Sunday. I have this video clocked at about 35 minutes-ish. Um, I may or may not have to cut it to get YouTube to allow me to put it on, but... Um, I mean, it's just ridiculous. If you take the amount of backtracking in this level and then cut all that out, the whole level is literally probably about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, if that much. But just the fact that the enemies respawn every time you go through there, the door won't let you out, and there's this stupid lizard room, um, you end up stuck in this level for about 35 minutes. I can't figure out if they realized the game was too short without this level, or they just wanted to extend it more, I don't know. Sadly, there's just not a lot of commentary I can give about this. I mean, I'm in a room beating lizards to death with a chain. I mean, you can't... And somehow I got poisoned after the fact. I don't know how that happened. Which apparently causes you to turn purple. I'm also going to eat a roast beef here that I got from the wall in our last video. And if anyone goes back and points out to me where I actually pick up that roast beef, I'm blocking you on YouTube. And it's a wonder I didn't get poisoned again there. I was going back to get the axe, in case you're wondering what I was doing. I'm wondering if this whole area wasn't originally titled a torture chamber of some kind, because the lizard man machines are the things the lizard men get out of. It's kind of like the other machine you see upstairs that says it's a device used to turn humans into demons. And then you have these lizard men getting out of these similar devices, which are put up on the wall. 
And then there's the torture chamber, which is where you find Mandragora later. So it makes me wonder if this level didn't have a more sinister purpose and they decided to uh, censor it for the final release. There's also the Tower of Execution level, so if you had two torture-themed levels, it probably would have seemed a bit redundant. But um, the connection is definitely there if you look through all the little hints. I mean, this level's got, even got cages in it. Cages and bloodstained machinery and torture chambers and a planetarium. Obviously there was something scientific but evil going on in this level. I will say one thing about Castlevania 64. It definitely presents a more technologically adept Dracula than we are used to. Um, we see Dracula with skeletons on motorcycles and elevators and scientific equipment. And don't forget the whole tower of uh, science when you're playing as Carrie. There is a roast beef on the ceiling in here, but I don't think I bothered with it because I had plenty and I shouldn't need it. Uh. Strangely, that power up didn't respawn. So literally, we did the same thing we've just done, only now we're carrying an item that we can only use in one place. Just, uh, this level is just a huge example of poor game design at its finest. I love the game, don't get me wrong. But, uh, I was actually trying to check that cage. You can get an item description out of those cages, but I couldn't get it to work and I didn't have the patience to keep trying. But the next time you play through this level, or as you watch this video, think of it as a, a scientific torture experimentation center, and you really get that vibe from it. Of course, as a little kid, I was too oblivious to ever pick up on that, but you know, maybe that's what they intended. this room again. Now I originally was not going to pick up the axe and then I saw two of them and I knew I was highway to broken weapon town so I picked it up. I remember one time when I was a kid I went out in the garden and mom had this axe she used to uh, I don't know what she used it for, but there was an axe out there, and I picked it up and threw it, and it created a lightning bolt and exploded when it hit the ground. And I got in a lot of trouble for making all that noise. Castlevania has very accurately recreated the effect of throwing an axe on the ground. I think we only had to go back to this room a couple more times, so that's good. <laughs> I can't jump. Make a fake not save right quick. Now I decided to kill these knights because they almost always drop a huge amount of red jewels, which if you're going to use level 3 weapons, uh, you need. And it's actually worth it because the level 3 weapons in this game pretty much destroy anything very quickly. See, I just one-shot that guy. Where's his buddy at? And I'm an idiot. Now, 
don't watch this very piss poor explosion effect here. So he's going to knock out that whole wall and he's just going to hide around the corner. So what happens is the jars flash light and then it catches the wall on fire which somehow brings the whole thing down. Mmm, inhale that magical roughage. Now if that didn't alert every bone man and vampire within 30 feet, I don't know what didn't. I really need to look up the Japanese version and see what the description of the bookcase is for this level is, and see if it has anything to do with the game. This level actually being a, uh, a torture chamber of some kind. The English description just says um, books on every topic under the sun, but none appear useful or something like that. I don't know why I'm doing that. pieces correspond to um, Neptune, Mercury, and Venus, and you just have to put them in the correct place. And I'm an idiot who apparently didn't take third grade uh, astronomy, so I didn't. I messed up Mars the first time, which is why it didn't work. And then it exploded and killed Reinhardt because he stared at it like an idiot. I like how there's this big fanfare in the music and then it just flies into the wall. Alright, you've completed the first major objective of this level. Now it's time for the hard part. Let me do another not save here. Like I said, I'm at a loss of things to comment on in this level because it's really just a lot of backtracking. This video would have been up a day sooner, but I lost my commentary. For some reason, Fraps didn't want to record it. So now I'm like watching the video and just like narrating it using Windows Movie Maker. Which is not near as fun. Um, I feel like I have a lot more funny and interesting things to say when I'm doing things on the fly, but actually my older reviews were done in this style. I recorded the video and then went back and did commentary on it. Usually, when something stupid happens in the game, I think of the same thing when I'm watching the video, so usually you get at least a good 90% of the commentary I would have said anyway. I will admit, I do enjoy the music in this level, even though it's just a reworked version of the title screen music. Not the title screen, the file select music. I think it was Evil Tim in one of his videos made a, a funny comment about how this game had the balls to reuse the uh, the file select music for a level. If you haven't watched Evil Tim's playthrough of this game in Castlevania 64, I definitely recommend looking it up. It's much more funny and informative than mine, I can guarantee that. 
Also, look how dangerously I like to live. I've been walking around with half my health for like at least five hours now. Some guy was using a lag bot there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the last time we have to go to this room, thank God. It seems like you can stand in those, but it won't close when you're in there, so you can't get trapped. Jorah's mask on the door there. And now we go into this door. Here's another supportive statement about this place being a mechanical science torture area. There's a huge cog in this room. I mean, obviously it's just a set piece for the player to have to go through, but still, it, it fits in with the theme of the level nicely, I think. This, uh, this room here is actually probably the most annoying segment in the whole game. I could do everything else uh, pretty much on command now, but this room still gives me trouble. This is also a neat room, I thought. Adds a really nice effect to the level, but um, it doesn't make very much sense to put the bar behind this huge mechanical room. Since when does Dracula's architecture ever made sense? And the Gutenberg room. I'm not sure what that machine's supposed to be. If you've seen a machine like this, please post a comment. These things you have to be really careful of because they have an enormous collision detection box. I'm also just an idiot. Um, but that being said, when you have magical nitro, if the thing is on the ground and you walk too close to it as it's going up, it will kill you because you take damage from touching the things. Go ahead and use our healing kit here. It's also a wonder that they didn't take the Red Cross symbol off of that, uh, that box for the American release. Believe it or not, the Red Cross symbol is a registered trademark, and uh, people have gotten in trouble for using it. Um, if you look at some of the localizations of Earthbound or Mother 2 on the Super NES, the Japanese version has uh, Red Cross symbols that were all removed for the American version because they were afraid of copyright infringement. Uh -huh. Must have went up a little too high on that corner there. Let's uh, try that again. Which is another reason why this uh, whole Magical Nitro segment was a bad idea for this game. Uh, I mean, going up a hill counts as leaving the ground, so when you touch down, it, it kills you. I mean, I realize not letting you jump was just a way of forcing you to do that little catwalk puzzle, but it, it's really annoying at a few other key places in the level when you're trying to carry this thing down there. Thankfully, most of the enemies in those rooms don't spawn when you're carrying magical nitro. Ironically, I get killed by walking up a pillar, but I think I managed to do this part here in one try. I 
look at me going ham here. Just mm. don't even care. Look at me. That's the sound of those platforms collapsing, by the way. That's why I'm hurrying that along with the uh, flame-spitting lizard men that you can't kill. Just a little food for thought on this level. Uh, if you're playing on the hard mode in the middle of that gear, there's a that gear. I'm sorry. There's a pile of bone towers there that are really hard to kill without carry. I imagine Reinhardt would have to use an axe or something. Otherwise, I don't see how this segment would be possible without killing those guys because they respawn whenever you enter the exit the room. So you're going to have to kill them while you have magical nitro. I mean, it's at least, you know, seven or eight of them, so you're not going to be able to just sneak by with the occasional fireball. Now, this area is another place you have to be careful because of the extreme collision detection. If the game so much as gets a hint that you might be about to be squashed by that thing, it will blow you sky high. Once you've done that, you pretty much got it. The only thing that can kill you is that sometimes the enemies in the main hall spawn despite you having magical nitro. And there's no way of knowing which direction they'll come from either. I think that only happens in Castlevania 64 though. I think in Legacy of Darkness they made it where they don't spawn. Also, I'm going to avoid the blood monster again by just going around. Uh, once you've read all the descriptions to solve the puzzle, you don't have to uh, you don't have to read that description over there, so you can just avoid that fight altogether. All right, now I'm going to show you what killed me as a kid. Now I stopped to look at this in the recording, and I'll show you why. You can't see the staircase, so I would always forget which side the staircase is on. Pick the left side and go flying off and blow myself up after walking across that whole catwalk segment. You can imagine my frustration. I am not quite, however, BA enough to go by and get the um, Magigore and carry them both back because there is a chance that a ghost or something in the torture chamber will swipe me and blow me up. And once you've done this, you're pretty much home free. The rest of the level isn't really tough at all. Of course you know that's the next boss fight sitting right down there. Ever notice that Reinhardt's feet go at 45 degree angles when he runs? I was like, I'm going to hit that candle. And now I was like, no, nah, I'm not. Oh, look who's back. And it's not Slim Shady. I hate these stupid things. I also wonder what the deal is with that metal pillar there. I mean, it serves no purpose, and they, yet they gave it a description. But if it wasn't going to serve some purpose, I don't know why they even put it in the game to begin with. Also, I won't be able to point this out when we get to Tower of Execution, because they're not in this version, but I'll tell you now, in um, K 
Castlevania 64, there are unused whip swing points hanging from the walls in the Tower of Execution. There's a very, very early trailer of this game showing Reinhardt swinging across a pit of lava. And it looks like it, that idea made it fairly far along, but they canned the mechanic for whatever reason. was a dumb place to put the power to the elevator. Do another not save. Showing you the contract back there in case you need it. How did he not notice the thing getting up? I mean, he's looking straight at the thing. Can he not see it moving towards him? I mean, I know the draw distance in N64 games are bad, but apparently Reinhardt's also blind. Ha! Huh? I see you. Fun fact, this is also the last boss music. Another fun fact, it's possible to kill this boss without depleting its whole energy bar. kill the head before you kill the body, it uh, kills the whole thing instantly. I've just gotten poisoned by the chemicals coming off of it. No, Reinhardt, you are the purple monsters. It's nothing a roast chicken I got out of the wall and a Sobe can't cure, however. And I let the last one live so he can go back and tell his people how they got slaughtered. <coughs> it's our chap, Rosa. There's no way I'm jumping through all that stuff to get back out. It's you. Probably not one of my favorite versions of death in this game, however. He looks kind of silly in this one.
Using Mama's explosive gardening axe, I have defeated Rosa. Reinhardt's stomach face glares at her. Oh yeah, right. You think, Reinhardt? Do you really think it was the Curse of Dracula? I'm sure she just ate some bad grapes or something at the supermarket. Notice nothing's happening, but he keeps backing away. Where is the bottom part of his jaw? Alright, with that you're pretty much free to leave this level. Thankfully. Flip of the switch here. Hop in the elevator over here. Alright, we've reached the end of the worst level in the game. Um, there's the bridge you would take if you were playing as Carrie. Um, you can also moon jump across there, I think, and end up in Tower of Sorcery if you're using cheats. But uh, we're going to take this route and head to Tower of Execution. Um, I think dual towers first, however, sorry. I always had a theory that Charlie Vincent is uh, ahead of you and burned the bridge down to keep you out. But why he didn't burn the other one down, I don't know. Alright, that's the end of another video. Uh, hopefully I'll get the other one up before a few months like this one. Thanks everybody for watching, and next time we'll play... Dual Tower.